People are gonna kill me for this video. It's no secret to me and the four other people I've talked to about this that I've never been big on Sonic games. It wasn't that I had some scarring experience with Sonic 06 or Sonic Boom, but I wouldn't say that I exactly grew up with the franchise in the way that a lot of its fans did. I loved Sonic Adventure 2 when I was a kid, and the original releases always seemed cool when a friend of mine brought his Game Gear around, but I never pushed too far beyond those experiences. I've obviously seen the slew of shit-tier Sonic games via memes in popular media, and kind of avoided playing the franchise for a while based off of the influx of complaints from the hardcore fans of the series. But when I saw Sonic Mania on sale, I decided to check out the reviews and people were raving about the game, so I finally picked it up. And I did not like it. I tried to, I honestly did. I pushed through the levels and just did not understand the hype. But it got me to thinking, do I just not like what the best of the best Sonic games bring to the table? And if so, why is that? So I set out to play all of what the internet seems to consider the very best Sonic games and figure it all out for myself. I'm sure I'll still miss a few that a lot of people would consider good games, and I really don't have an interest in cherry picking the many horrible Sonic games in the franchise just to go, see, I told you so. So without further ado, let's get into this thing. I could start this whole video off with Mania, the game that prompted this entire endeavor, but I decided to start with the original three Sonic the Hedgehogs. Right away I was thrusted into everyone's favorite, Green Hill Zone, where I spent five minutes trying to figure out why I couldn't spin dash. Uh, apparently that's a Sonic 2 thing. Well alright. I was actually moderately impressed with how decent the game looks in the starting zone, especially keeping in mind that it is as old as it is. I grew up playing a lot of Super Mario World, which had relatively toned down backgrounds and foregrounds compared to the bright, vibrant scape of Green Hill Zone, so that's definitely a plus. That being said, I couldn't honestly tell you that I had fun in Green Hill Zone. The whole idea of going fast is always associated with Sonic the Hedgehog, and I rarely managed to get to that point. I know a lot of it has to do with my skill level, but even when I really did start to get to that point where I was like, hell yeah, this is fast, this shit tended to happen right here. A lot of the game seems to be predicated on knowing where things are in the level, which is a design that I really dislike. What made even less sense to me was the next zone in which the game goes from trying to be about moving relatively quickly through the level and making snap decisions to being a slowed down slog of waiting for platforms to move so that you can continue on. The game continues this way all the way until Starlight Zone, which was far and away my favorite zone of the game. I actually had fun during these three acts, and it really bothered me that only two zones in the game really try to keep this momentum flowing. All in all, I really wouldn't revisit Sonic 1, and even if I did, it would just be to play Starlight Zone again. But hey, Mega Man 2 and 3 were much better in my mind than the first one, and people seem to feel that way about Sonic 2, judging from the various lists on the internet. So I fired up Sonic 2, and, uh, well, I loved it. I was honestly surprised at how much this game improved over its predecessor. There was only a handful of moments where I felt like I couldn't speed through a level and most of those felt like it was my fault that I wasn't moving fast. Things didn't feel like I needed to know the level of the layout before being able to move quickly through a zone. If I missed a high ground route, there was usually about two or three other routes to take in its stead, and it was a near seamless transition every time. Zones like Oil Ocean didn't punish you for landing in what would otherwise be death in a lot of other games. And I think this needs to be said at this point, but nearly every single song in this game is the definition of a grade A banger, really kicking off the tradition of great music in Sonic games. Sure, most of the bosses were ridiculously easy, and nearly every time I got an invincibility power-up, it tended to be next to a segment with little to no danger, which was pretty silly. I still disliked any sort of water zone immensely. The auto-scroller at the end and Wing Fortress in general sucked the life out of both me and the game, and Hilltop Zone's music sounds like this. But these few complaints can be overlooked pretty easily as the game keeps allowing you to do what Sonic was built on, going fast. I'm honestly impressed with this game and it's probably the first time I've been able to say in my adult life, yeah, I understand why people like Sonic games. So the bar's set pretty high for Sonic 3 after this sweet note, but a lot of people place it right below or on par with 2, so I was still pretty excited going into this one. Uh, side note, I wasn't entirely sure which version to go with here. 
I guess the and knuckles part of the game was more or less an add-on that was supposed to be released on the same cartridge but wasn't at first? Or something like that. Either way, I did not enjoy the and knuckles part of the game. Gliding around was alright, but the climbing was arduously slow and the levels just didn't feel like they were built for knuckles and they very likely were not. Beyond that, I was having a hard time having as much fun with this one as I did with Sonic 2. It wasn't Sonic 1 levels of unfun, but I definitely didn't feel like I was maintaining the same amount of momentum that I achieved in the second game. Hydro City... Hydro... Hydrocity? Hydrocity was surprisingly better than I thought it would be, especially with the slides and the running on water. Carnival Night Zone was really fun even though I didn't know what the hell was happening most of the time. But I was hard pressed to find anywhere near as much fun as I had in Sonic 2. All the fluidity that 2 brought to the table was bogged down in exchange for grab mechanics, and a lot of them at that. I noticed this particularly in Launch Base and Mushroom Hill Zone, where a lot of your speed was instantly halted by you grabbing onto things to progress. It's a fine mechanic in a game like Donkey Kong Country, where your goal is to platform quickly through a level, but while keeping a relatively controlled speed. But it's much more jarring in a Sonic game where your speed is relatively unstable and uncontrollable much of the time. The bosses were harder in Sonic 3, which isn't a bad thing, but they tended to consist of the surprisingly spry Robotnik performing acrobatic flips into the nearest Koopa Copter and proceeding to get fucked as he attempts to suck Sonic into his projectiles. I think it was right around Sandopolis and uh, Lava Reef Zone where I lost my fucking mind. Everything that was progressed from Sonic 1 to Sonic 2 was reverted and you're greeted with a cacophony of slow moving platforms and waiting for the level to shift so that you can leap on to the next waiting area. It's not very fun when you're trying to jump through these hoops as fast as possible only to get sandwiched between pretty much anything that moves in this game. Getting smushed in Sonic the Hedgehog is absolute instant death, even with invincibility, which is just a real treat to have to deal with over and over again. It's hard to assess exactly how I feel with Sonic 3. There are a lot of parts that I enjoy very much, but most of it seems inferior to 2 in my opinion. Copyright Infringement Zone was really fun for the first bit, but then you get to this. Setting Super Sonic's ring collecting adventure aside, the final boss is actually really fun. The music is absolutely stellar and it's a pretty good ending to an otherwise flawed game. To wrap up the old school Sonic games, I finished with Sonic CD, a game that was pretty high on a lot of lists to my surprise. Now, I don't know what Sonic CD is. I beat the fucking game, I just, I can't tell you what it is. It's, um... To most accurately describe it, it's weird. It's the Majora's Mask of Sonic games. The game was on Sega CD, obviously, so it had these lapses between soundtracks where it loads a new song. This results in bouts of complete silence with only sound effects playing for an uncomfortable amount of time. The actual music is this mix of vocal oohs and ahs that tends to be unsettling a lot of the time. I mean, listen to this fucking boss track, dude. The game doesn't feel like a Sonic game at all. It's got this interesting past, present, and future mechanic, including a good future and a bad future. I couldn't tell you the major differences between the two, but I can tell you that the one-ups make this noise. I didn't like this game at all at first, uh, but then, I don't know why, uh, but it grew on me. It's eerie. It's goddamn strange. I didn't know what was happening at all most of the time. It's like someone described what Sonic the Hedgehog is to someone who had never seen a video game before and tasked them to make Sonic CD. The result is a hodgepodge of odd mechanics, including, but not limited to, moving so fucking quickly that you go to the past or the future, changing the timeline by defeating something in the past and witnessing the result by going into the future, Robotnik coming up with unreasonably stupid devices to attack Sonic with, rescuing flowers instead of animals from the pod after a boss, and Sonic standing like a human man with rickets in the bonus stages. I actually found myself wanting to know what changes from the past to the future and seeking out signs to see what the difference is. I would then determine whether or not the past was worth saving based on how asshole the zone was to their new Time Lord. Honestly, I like this game. 
It's short and sweet, but that's fine by me. And the opening and ending cinematics were anime as fuck. So, now that I have the original games under my belt, I decided that now would be the best time to revisit Mania. I haven't talked in depth about the issues that I've had with it yet, but trying it again definitely eliminated a lot of the skill-based issues that I had before. I know how Sonic games work at this point after beating four of them, so I was much better at jumping at the right moments and being able to relatively carry my momentum throughout the zones. Until Flying Battery. I did not like Flying Battery Zone in the slightest. I didn't like it in Sonic 3 and I dislike it even more in Mania. You take this wonderfully fast-paced adventure through Chemical Plant and Studiopolis and you just kill it with the same mechanics that I didn't like in 3. It actually frustrated me so badly that my impatience got the better of me multiple times to the point that I just shut the game off. Later on, I returned with the mindset of, hey, this is going to be a slow and steady level, just take it easy, and I did much better. But I shouldn't have to do that. Playing the zones back to back, you're put into this mindset of reacting to things as they fly at you and zooming through zone after zone, and then that mindset is immediately warped when faced with flying battery, which is very heavy on the waiting from part to part. It bothers me even more when you're faced with some pretty decent zones immediately afterwards, making me question why flying battery is even in the game. Don't get me wrong, Mania looks and sounds incredible, it's the epitome of taking these older games and rejuvenating them with a fresh coat of paint. There were plenty of moments when I was now able to go, holy shit, I recognize that, that's really cool. But my issue stems from the opposite side of that philosophy. When you don't like parts of the subject matter, it's hard to like the revitalized versions. Oil Ocean in Sonic 2 was a very okay zone that wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't awful. And yet the second act of it took one of my least favorite mechanics from Sonic 3 with the added bonus of Knuckles and slogged down the act with it. Mirage Saloon was beautiful to look at, but for some reason Act 1 decides to tackle the very unlikable auto-scrolling section from 2's Wing Fortress. Lava Reef is a nearly verbatim copy of its predecessor, and that includes having to stop to hit the buttons to open the corresponding barrier, just like the old version. There's no challenge in it, there's no danger in trying to hit the buttons. They're just there to make the game slower. I think playing through Mania finally made me realize something about most Sonic games that never occurred to me before. I like all of them to some degree until they turn into a slower based platformer, and that always happens in every game at some point. I've always thought of them as these fast and reactive side-scrollers that test your reflexes with how quickly you can get through a level, but they always tend to at some point boil down to waiting for platforms, level specific gimmicks, and watching stage hazards get to a certain point to where you can pass through them harmlessly. And that's perfectly fine, but I have a harder time accepting that style in Sonic games because I had always had this idea in my mind that they're more comparable to speedy Twitch reflex games like Super Meat Boy and Celeste, and not as much like a quicker paced Shantae. That being said, I actually hated Mania for a long time. I didn't want to record footage for it, I wasn't having fun, and I couldn't figure out why in the slightest because looking at all of the reviews told me that I should be feeling great about this game. I'm not sure why I continued to punch through it, but I am glad that I did because it made me realize what I like and dislike in Sonic games. I've never had such a mix of emotions come one right after the other while playing a game than I have with Mania. A prime example was in Metallic Madness in which I went from the foreground to the background and I just sat there and I was like, holy shit, that was cool, dude. But then about two minutes later, I relived that feeling of flying through the level only to be crushed by a pillar. The homage that Mania pays to these games is 100% heartfelt and the definition of achieving something fantastically applauseworthy in nature. I can say that it does the franchise justice without a doubt, but I can also say that it perfectly encapsulates my feelings of woe in the very same games that it pays tribute to. Mania is unequivocally and objectively a good game, it just wasn't for me. Much of it felt great with the highlights being Chemical Plant, Studiopolis, Stardust, and oddly enough Titanic Monarch Zone but most of it fell flat for me personally. Now, before I move on, there's a particular obstacle that tends to show up over and over in these games, particularly in Sonic 3 and Sonic CD, and it's something that I mentioned earlier on. These bumpers. As innocuous as they sound, nothing in the game kills my buzz more than getting a good momentum going and then getting a big, hey, fuck you, go the other way, to the face. As much as Mania tends to be a love letter to both of these games in particular, it actually seems to dial back the go-the-other-way mentality. 
I feel like including shit like this would really accentuate the clunkier and poorer design decisions from these obviously older games, and it's nice to see them not occur as frequently, at least from my experience playing Mania. But at the same time, it also makes me wonder why the developers chose to include some of the block pushing and waiting mechanics that these older games are chocked full of as well. I want you to understand my point of view here as more or less a newcomer to this chunk of the series. I expect the mechanics of a game to feel intuitive, and much of the Sonic series wants you to just chill out on the jump inputs and go along for the ride. It took me a long time to train myself to stop jumping as much when I had a lot of momentum going up and down ramps because I was punished about 90% of the time. And when I finally do just let the game take me for a ride, I get flung in the other direction because of the bumpers scattered at the end of these long roller coasters. They don't kill me, they're seemingly just there to annoy the player the majority of the time. It may sound silly, but when this did happen to me in Mania, which was rare, I thought the game wanted me to go the other direction, not that I should full stop and turn around. It doesn't help that the game actually encourages you to go the other direction multiple times throughout the game, including areas like Studiopolis and Chemical Plant Zone. It takes that intuition of, oh, the game wants me to go this way now, and shoves it back in your face. And on the note of full stopping, I hate the momentum system in these games. I know this movement is pretty core to the franchise, but there are a lot of times where the game wants you to stop and spin, or you just lose your speed and you need to stop to spin dash. And that's just it, you have to stop. If you're still sliding along, you can't instantly spin dash because you'll jump instead. And I really dislike that mechanic, especially when you realize that Genesis controllers had these three buttons that did the exact same fucking thing. Anyways, before I wrap this video up, I felt like I needed to figure out what some of the best 3D Sonic games were like. Unfortunately, that doesn't include Sonic Colors because I couldn't get my emulator, my Nintendo Wii, to work with the game. But I do understand that Colors is supposed to be pretty damn good, so take that for what you will. But at any rate, it had been something at the back of my mind for a while now. But I had to know if Sonic Adventure 2 was as fun as I remembered it being. I'm sure I could cram a whole nother video full of this particular game, but I'm hesitant on doing another Sonic video besides this one. Interestingly enough, Sonic Adventure 2 tends to hover around the top 10 for most of these sites. This site has it at number one for some reason. So let's jump in and see if there's any merit to that. Yeah! Fuck yeah, dude! Fuck you, Omachow! I can't hear you! Speak up! My name is Dr. Eggman, the world's greatest scientist. Uh, fuck the moon! <laughs> yeah! Woo! I found you, Faker. Faker? I think you're the fake hedgehog around here. Yeah, this game isn't good. There's so much to it that I actually still find reasonably enjoyable, but it was so heavily flawed that I don't know where to begin. So setting aside the ridiculous cutscenes and focusing on the game's mechanics alone, Sonic Adventure 2 is easily one of the biggest victims of lost potential that I've ever seen. The boss fights are absurd in the fact that they either make you wait around or you can just spam the attack button. The Tails levels are a waste of space on the game as you walk through the level and spam, spam the, the attack, attack button, button, which makes this fucking sound by the way. The worst part about the Tails part of the game isn't the fact that you're confined to this bulky, noisy pile of trash, but the fact that the game then throws it back in your face when you do the Chow Garden stuff by showing you that, hey look, Tails can fly, but we totally didn't think to build any sort of gameplay around that mechanic. The Knuckles levels... Okay, I still kinda like those. I mean, the music is just goddamn bumping. The Emerald searching is tedious, but shit, I actually don't mind it. I'm willing to fully acknowledge that my opinion may be a victim to my nostalgia for both the music in Knuckles stages and the fact that I used to play against my brother all the time in the versus mode of this part of the game. Yeah, this is perfect. The Sonic levels aren't actually that bad either, but they didn't age very well as far as trying to navigate through them. The camera's dog shit a lot of the time, the homing system doesn't always go to the target that you wanted it to, and trying to land on rails is way more precise than it has any right to be. And I still don't understand in the slightest how every Sonic game decides to bind multiple actions to one button. It's arduous as hell to try to light dash through a line of rings and just do a spin instead. 
At the end of the day, I have to credit the game for being ambitious for its time, but I can't in all good conscience declare Sonic Adventure 2 a good game. Holy shit, dude, is that a little fucking tiger? Kobe! Is that a fucking penguin, dude? Ooh. Ooh. Finally, we have Sonic Generations. Now, I had pretty much zero expectations for this game going into it. I'd heard mostly positive things like, wow, Sonic is back and better than ever, and the very occasional, wow, this game's trash, I can't believe Sonic is fucking dead, so I really didn't know what was gonna happen. What I was met with was a game that was gorgeous to look at and actually super fun. I had a blast with Sonic Generations, I really did. The game swaps between old school Sonic levels and more modern 3D ones, and it was just all around very entertaining to play. Much like Sonic 2, if I missed a certain route or avenue through the level, I was almost always greeted with another way to continue without losing too much momentum. The 3D versions of the different zones were easily my favorite parts, and I didn't expect that at all. But Sonic moves pretty seamlessly through each part of the various zones, and the game prompts you to press a certain button when you get to different parts that require you to slide, dash, or jump, making it a lot easier to mitigate potential slowdowns without memorizing the level. The boost button on 3D levels was easily one of my most favorite things implemented in a Sonic game, as you're able to speed up and fly through different enemies and parts of the stage at the press of a button. The side gimmicks weren't horrible wastes of time, they're all pretty fun in their own rights, with the few exceptions of shit like having Knuckles dig for you while you wait around. The game definitely isn't perfect. The challenges are a pretty cool way of letting you play the same levels with different goals, and that's great but I usually like to try to move through the entire game before getting into challenges, and Generations makes you complete a few of them before being able to move on to the next three zones. It's not that they're particularly difficult, but more that I want to try to move on to see what the next zone is like. In addition to that, they put Navi in the game for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why they went through the trouble of creating a boss fight and then having this little robot follow you around to make sure that you're doing it correctly. It really kind of squanders the entire point of a boss fight in a way. But beyond these few minor details, I had a lot of fun with Generations and the homage that it pays to the franchise as a whole. Except they remixed City Escape and I can't forgive them for that. I'm sure a lot of people are going to get mad about this, but Sonic 2, Generations, and Chunks of Mania are what I expect Sonic games to be like. And I'm going to come out and say this now if it wasn't painfully obvious, but I'm bad at video games. Sonic 2, Sonic CD, and Generations are probably the easiest ones that I've played, and yet they're my favorites because the punishment for missing a jump or a route isn't always death, it's usually just a time loss. I have no long ingrained nostalgia, no years and years of Sonic playing under my belt, but this is just the way I feel, whether I'm qualified or not to make that assertion. I think at the end of the day, I now understand a lot about what Sonic is, or at least what the good parts of it are. I think too many people take all of the older games and put them up on a pedestal as untouchable, and that form of thinking only hinders the franchise as a whole. The team who made Sonic Mania is obviously talented to a very strong degree and that talent really shined when they were putting their own flair on the game, when they were cooking up their own ideas, bosses, and zones. It's unfortunate to me personally that I couldn't find as much enjoyment in the game because it emulated many of the weaknesses of these older Sonic games. Either way, I can confidently say that I do look forward to seeing what Head Cannon slash Pagoda West slash Christian Whitehead slash all of the awesome devs who worked on Mania will cook up next. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by me, and my curiosity about a franchise I haven't really explored as much as I thought I should have. Well, that seems pretty redundant. But my point is that I tend to take a bit more time than I probably should while making these videos. So if you want to catch me in the meantime, I have a Twitch that I stream on rarely and a Twitter that I use sometimes. I know those certainly aren't glowing endorsements, but those are definitely things that exist if you didn't think that they did. I made a Discord too. I'm not really sure where I'm going with all this, but I think you become slightly better looking if you follow those. Not 100% sure on that though. Have a good one.